Hello, good morning, and welcome to this week. I'm sitting here with Michael Lynch from the great state of Ohio. Hey, Michael, how are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm doing good. Um, except it was windy as all get out this morning. I mean, the wind was just blowing east, west, north, south, <laughs> up, down. <laughs> Wendy, they call it Chicago the Wendy City, but New York could take the title this morning. So how are them stocks doing, man? You, the market dropped, the, the largest single point drop in history. I saw yesterday. that, 10% during the whole week, but around 4% just yesterday. 4% yesterday, and as a percentage, they're saying that it is not amongst the top 10, amongst the top 20, mm. because it was so high um, at the beginning of the, uh, uh, crash that it uh, didn't result in such a significant drop in terms of the overall percentage. Mm -hmm. But um, they're spooked. Coronavirus, they're spooked, you know? And, um, but I wonder if it's just a virus or if there are other things going on in the economy that, well, they say that uh, the virus is uh, in China is disrupting the supply chain. So uh -huh. a lot of the goods are produced in China and they're not being delivered. They may not be delivered in time. They got this thing called just-in-time production mm -hmm. uh, in auto and other industries. And so it kind of disrupts uh, everything. And then the outbreak is also in Europe and in Asia. They don't know whether or not US goods will be um, uh, sold, mm -hmm. uh, uh, whether there'll be demand for them. Mm -hmm. And then if they can't sell, they'll have to cut back production and so on and so forth. But I don't know, they, they say that the stock market is not the real economy. Hmm. They say it's, you know, um, the economy for those who invest in the stock market, yeah. which does not include me. No, me neither. I don't have any <laughs> stocks. <laughs> they always measure the economy, you know, how well the economy is doing by how well the stock market and well, no, see, that's what is. that's what did. Actually, my friend, who's an economist, uh, who we had hoped would join us this morning, says kind of the opposite. He said the stock market is not the real economy. Uh -huh. That is something you know, existing alongside mm -hmm. the real economy and, and therefore you have to look at what's happening in the real economy, the real economy being, you know, uh, industry, mm -hmm. hospitals, uh, you know, um, the uh, service industry, mm -hmm. um, McDonald's and, and Burger King and the rest of uh, other restaurants and uh, the agriculture, you know, mm -hmm. the big farm, agribusiness, and so on and so forth. That's the quote unquote real economy mm -hmm. post office and so on. Um, and, um, but the stock market is something, something else. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll, you know, when I was in college, we used to sit around dinner time. And on, when the news came on, whenever the market would go up, we would boo. <laughs> <laughs> and when it would sure. go down, we would clap because we thought we were making a comment. I guess we were, uh -huh. us radical yeah. students, we were making a comment on uh, capitalism. Yeah. Absolutely. But, um, and then some guy criticized us. He said, man, no, you shouldn't do that because your uh, people's lives depend on what's going on and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. We did it anyway. Yeah. <laughs> you weren't paying them no mind. Anyway, it's going to be a big issue. It is, in yeah. the election campaign. Mm -hmm. Uh, I imagine, and the response of the Trump administration to the coronavirus. Absolutely. Which Rush Limbaugh, Trump's good friend, said just yesterday or two days ago, I believe, mm. on a podcast mm. in a comment that the coronavirus is, in fact, a conspiracy of the Democratic Party and communists. That was oh. those the words he used. Lord have mercy. We're getting blamed for the coronavirus yeah. now? <laughs> I ain't got no coronavirus. Yeah, no, you know? neither do I. And I don't know nobody that has it either. You know? <laughs> Red germs. So come on. You know, this, the, the anti-communism is like it's, it's like hysterical. It you is. Know? It's like it's like a form of mm -hmm. madness, yeah. you know, mental illness. You They'll know? blame you for leaving the refrigerator open. Anything. You know, absolutely. Um, it's craziness. And um, I think Trump kind of echoed uh, uh, that. But in addition, 
there was a whistleblower who said mm -hmm. that when they sent people from uh, one of the departments of government to, I don't know if it was their ship in Japan, the cruise ship, or maybe it was China itself. Mm -hmm. They didn't give them any protection or gloves, mm. or they were they, they were exposed, and uh, so uh, that was reported yesterday, mm. I believe, in the Washington mm -hmm. Post and, and a couple of other newspapers. And now, Vice President Pence, who made a disaster of the HIV/AIDS crisis in Indiana, is in charge of this crisis situation, which is really really scary. Yeah. But believable at this point. I guess he's <laughs> going to advise us to pray on it. <laughs> I guess so. I guess so. And that was interesting when we talked to some of our Brazilian comrades about you know the mm. coronavirus, and they said mm. if you pay attention closely, the kind of world narrative is China's doing well, taking people out of poverty, everything's mm. good. But the second there's an outbreak like this, they start blaming the communists mm. and the government. So it's kind of unfair, and there's a racial kind of a. Uh, uh, pun to what they're saying and the critiques. I believe that. I believe that. So uh, we had a visitor this week from uh, Brazil, um, and uh, she's the leader of the uh, Bia Lopez, the leader mm -hmm. of the Young Communist League of uh, Brazil. Mm -hmm. And she was talking about the uh, fight against the extreme right and yeah. the president there, Bolsonaro. And uh, they're getting ready for elections in a couple of years, and they're building broad coalitions. And they were struck by the similarities mm -hmm. of the uh, democratic struggle in Brazil and in the United States. Not the same, clearly, course, yeah. but similar. And uh, and it was wonderful to to have her here. And we we had a very warm and, and comradely exchange of of, of uh, views. Uh, I don't think that she was here in time for the debate but you saw the debate last i did week, see the debate didn't yeah you? yeah man south carolina that was a crazy show a mess to it say was, the least it was like you know Childish. amateur. it was like <laughs> amateur wrestling you know those you know hulk 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 what's his name hulk, hulk hogan, hogan yeah <laughs> hogan whatever that cat's name it was just you know they were jumping and gesticulating and acting out and shouting and screaming mm -hmm. and oh my god everybody was you know blaming bernie for everything they were ganging up on him oh absolutely you know, yeah. he's he's the uh uh the front runner mm -hmm. both in terms of popularity in the polls and also the number of delegates exactly. it was like bring bernie down you know it was which it was bloomberg the last time around but I think since they kind of made an embarrassment out of him, they were going for the front runner this they, time. They, You're right. They, they should go after Bloomberg. Absolutely. I don't have anything wrong with centrist candidates. Don't 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 get me wrong, y'all. I mean, that's their point of view. Mm -hmm. uh, you had Kamala Harris. Mm -hmm. and, you know, you had Cory Booker. Mm -hmm. And then they say this brother uh, Deval Patrick is running from, but I ain't heard nothing about him. Neither have I. No. You know, he was. I don't know if he's still in or not. Then you had Beto O'Rourke, who um, you know thought he was going all the way, but he didn't really go all that far. Okay, so this you know that's their thing, and mm -hmm. but but with Bloomberg, you know it's 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 the billions, the 40, 50 billions, mm -hmm. the sixty billions, and then there's the more more importantly there's the platform mm -hmm. and what he did to stop and frisk, you know, which Absolutely. we talked about last week, which was really you know kind of a police state. Mm -hmm. You know, we, they shook down, you know, up against the wall, you know, uh, MF, you know, uh, the police, black and Latino mm -hmm. youth. Some of them people got stopped 40, yeah. 50, 100 times, you know? No excuse for it. Absolutely. I mean, just, just, and so Bloomberg, you got a lot of answering to do. That's, yeah. all, that's all I'm going <laughs> to well, say. Well, after all that whooping on him, all he has left is his TV commercials and his face up there in Times Square. But Yeah, well, that's a lot. Oh, is yeah. his face in Times Square? Oh, everywhere. I, I yeah. haven't been to Times Square. Really? <laughs> Took the Brazilian comrades there. They didn't know if they wanted to take a picture or not. With, uh, with, uh, with uh, Bloomberg. Well, yeah. we're going to see the South Carolina primary mm. is um, tomorrow, Saturday. And they say that Mr. Biden is leading. By double digits. That's what they know? say. Yeah, that's what they say. But we'll we'll see tomorrow. Mr. Clyburn endorsed a uh, 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 Bernie. I mean, uh, uh, um, Joe Joe mm. Biden. 
he didn't in, in, endorse Bernie. <laughs> but uh, that's okay, you know, he has his position. Mm -hmm. um, and he kind of compared it, they asked the dude a, a question about, did he think that um, Bernie was going to have a negative impact um, both on the general election with respect to down ballots mm -hmm. and uh, whether or not he would succeed in in, in winning the presidency. And so Clyburn harkened back to the 72 convention with Mr. McGovern. Mm -hmm. I remember that uh, because my mom and my dad were campaigning for McGovern. He said, everybody was so excited at the convention and they left at three o'clock in the morning and there was euphoria that they had elected mm -hmm. such a pro-peace, pro-civil rights dude and then the the, the cat got defeated in all but one state against mm. Nixon. But you know what, Michael? Today is different than 1970. Absolutely. You know? And one of the big differences is, is that there's no Soviet Union. Mm -hmm. You know? No, no Vietnam War. No Vietnam War. Uh, though there is a war in Afghanistan, and as Tupac says, there is a war in the streets. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, the so-called war on drugs, which they use to lock our brothers and sisters uh, up. Mm -hmm. But the point is that the level of anti-communism and anti-socialism coming out of Wall Street and uh, uh, New York City and uh, Washington D.C. and Hollywood has diminished mm -hmm. the Red Scare. Mm -hmm. You know, now Trump and them are trying to re invent the red scare, yeah. uh, the, you know, red baiting Bernie and so on and so forth. But Al Sharpton said yesterday, I saw in an article that black people are not stupid enough to go for uh, Trump's red baiting of Bernie. I would say that's true. You know, black people are not going to go for that. Mm -hmm. That rhetoric is 30 years too late, really. Latinos didn't go for it in Nevada. That's true. You they know? Mm -hmm. And uh, White working class people, particularly young people, are not going for it. Women are not going for it. And as we keep saying, it's going to take a movement to mm -hmm. defeat Trump. It is. A mass electoral movement, mm -hmm. y'all. From the center to the left. From the center to the left. And it's got to be, a woman has to be involved, in my opinion. People no, of color. Nobody listens to me, but, <laughs> <laughs> but maybe, maybe one day. But I heard an interesting interview last night. Um, on, uh, I wanted to get your opinion uh, on it. Uh, it was on CNN mm. um, and Cuomo, uh, the governor's brother, was is the moderator, you know, and they had a New York Times um, uh, columnist, mm. Friedman, I think his name is, and he said that the main thing now is that there has to be a government of national unity. Hmm and that the um, Democrats would be smart to put together a coalition from the right all the way to the center, and then including part of the left to bring, and he talked about people like the uh, general that led the assault that killed Osama. Mm -hmm. And he talked about, you know, people like uh, some of the, uh, centrist politicians like Amy mm. Lobachar and and they and they talked about you know labor people that this government of national unity because there are extremes on the right and on the left and 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 everybody needs to come back to the center mm. in order to move the country forward. What do you, what do you think about that? Well, I don't think they're mistaken in that the many of the people that voted for Trump who mm. may identify themselves as moderates or mm. conservatives, you know, voted for Trump in the last election mm. um, over Hillary, who was not a very strong candidate compared to, you know, other Democratic candidates in the past. Mm. We're going to need them to vote against Trump. There's no doubt about that. Mm. Right. Um, we tend to live many of us on the left here in the United States in what I call leftist bubble, mm. right? And we put labels on things that many people don't understand, right? And so we say, well, that person's progressive, this person's a social Democrat, this person's an orthodox Marxist, et cetera, et cetera. Mm. The average That's American- the orthodox Marxist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the average American voter doesn't think in those terms. And so the person who responded to this interview may not be wrong in that if the Democratic Party is serious about defeating Trump, that they need to press for unity. Now, 
I can, we can't, we're not fortune tellers, so we can't say what that's going to look like exactly. Right, right, right. But without a doubt, it's going to take voters from, we could say center right, you know, uh, not Trump's base probably, but, you know, center right mm-hmm. voters who um, are hurt by the stock market perhaps, or mm-hmm. hurt by some of the things Trump has uh, done in terms of, you know, attacking labor unions, immigrant right. families, et cetera, right. et cetera. It's going to take all of us mm-hmm. united behind the issues mm-hmm. and not individual candidates. I know mm-hmm. we always quote Gus Hall when he said, uh, this is uh, bourgeois politics, not socialist politics. Right. And that's for that's right. many of my friends who are Bernie candidates who mm. say it's Bernie or bust, because mm. I understand that as Bernie or Trump. Mm-hmm. And we can't think of it like that. We right. have to always stay united around the issues, because that's where workers and um, oppressed peoples can be organized, radicalized, mm. you know, and th- we have to focus on unity. And um, going back to the debates, I'm thinking of uh, Pete Buttigieg, Mm. Um, and his comment on uh, if I could take a pill, mm. you know, to not be gay anymore, I would do it. And even Bernie's response to Cuba, calling it authoritarian. And the real special thing about this party, in mm. terms of our analysis of the elections and our uh, unique worldview, is that we don't endorse candidates. Right. And I think that's a very wise strategy because we must always remain critical of some of these positions that people take. But True. at the same time, we admit that it is a sign of progress that a homosexual man is running in the race and doing well, absolutely doing well. And a woman like Warren or Klobuchar, mm-hmm. and that someone, even though they may not be a Marxist, is thrown around the word socialist and getting people excited about uh, what they understand as socialism. Mm-hmm. And we call this the socialist moment because it's a movement. We have to, in, in addition to taking down Trump and the GOP in November, we're building a mass movement. And yes, that includes people in the quote unquote center. We can't do it without them. You know, um, in a certain sense though, the concept of national unity is kind of an abstraction, even Mm. though, you know, some people might uh, agree with it, which is why I'm glad you uh, also placed it in the context of what the issues are, because you just can't defeat Trump by running against Trump. Absolutely. Because you got to provide people something to vote for. You know, it has to be a balance between on the one side being anti-Trump, which Mm -hmm. we are, and on the other side, pro something. And Mm -hmm. what are we pro? You know, we're pro jobs. We're pro environment. Democracy. We're pro democracy. Anti-war. We're Mm -hmm. anti-war, you know. Uh, So issues like the Green New Deal is is an important uh, uh, global warming mm-hmm. is an important police violence and the killing of our mm-hmm. young men and women. You immigrant know? rights, yeah. Immigrant rights, getting them babies out of cages, you know, health care, universal health care. Um, all of those are the issues that, that, that have to be put on the table. And, you know, they're talking about bringing out a historic vote, but mm. people got to have something to vote for. Absolutely. And that's going to be a, a critical, critical issue. Michael, you are involved in the uh, Spectre podcast. I am. Speaking of issues, what kinds of issues are the young communists? Uh, the Spectre is put out by the young communists of the CPUSA. What are y'all talking about? Well, the next couple episodes we have lined up in the works and are going under the kind of editorial process right mm. now is on an analysis of the elections mm. first, and then an analysis on the black national question, which is very controversial and being brought back up in debates, particularly on the internet, the internet left, as I like to call it. What's controversial? Well, I think that in my opinion, this is just what I've seen. It's mm. many, what we call, you know, ultra leftists, especially in the Western Maoist tradition, they tend to be demanding a black a Soviet oh, Republic in the South. Self-determination for the black for, Yeah, self-determination. Oh, okay. But they're doing it more so than the African-American population here in the country. Wow, that's, that's kind of weird. It is a little odd. And so it's important that we address this issue. Go figure. Yeah. Huh. And then um, another episode is we're going to be interviewing a, a comrade from the World Federation of Democratic Youth. He's mm. actually the recently elected president, and he is from the Young Communist League of Spain. And in Spain, the Communist Party is in the government. Isn't yes, it? they were just recently um, elected to a, a ruling coalition. 
um, with the Socialist Workers Party there, and they work within a coalition called Podemos. Mm. And they're, you know, from my point of view, they're kicking butt. I mean, they're mm. raising the minimum wage. They're uh, making life a little bit more comfortable for workers. Because mm. um, for the past, you know, few years, it's been a more conservative government, kind right. of like the old Franco right. people. Right. Right. Well, that's the bucking the right wing trend mm. in, in Europe. Absolutely. And keep on bucking, y'all. <laughs> You know, keep on. We used to say, keep on pushing. You yeah. Know, keep, on, <laughs> keep on bucking the right wing, the right wing trend. Well, uh, that's wonderful. By the way, I forgot to say, good morning, revolution. We always start <laughs> off with, with a good morning. Maybe that's because you were you were here sitting next to me, and I, I just forgot. But good morning, revolution. <laughs> good morning, revolution to you all. By the way, start a watch party, y'all. Share this video uh, with your uh, friends. We will be back next week with another edition of uh, This Week. And by that time, we will have gotten the results back from the Iowa uh, caucuses. And then there's Tuesday. Isn't there a big election on Tuesday? This coming Tuesday? Oh, yeah. Is that Super Tuesday? Uh, yes. Super Tuesday. Make sure you go out and vote. Vote. Vote with both feet. No, no. You have to walk with your feet through the voting booth. Vote with one hand. <laughs> and only vote once. We don't want nobody getting criticized for it anything like you know vote rigging or anything yeah like that, Republicans. <laughs> uh and, and um you know uh and then we'll have a better sense of what's going to happen in the uh, uh market mm. there's a possibility according to my economist friend that um there could be a recession mm, i wouldn't doubt it capitalism capitalism reached its tipping point and i think trump's gonna get a little tired of losing instead of tired of winning here so and recession is not good. People get laid off. Absolutely. And, uh, um, you know, industries close down. And, uh, and it will create political, a political mm. crisis. Mm -hmm. uh, there's already the danger of a state of emergency around this virus, and they're not prepared for it. Mm -hmm. uh, and God knows what will happen with mm. these fools in the, in the White House and uh, around uh, of Congress. We're going to have an article uh, by John Bactel dealing with that issue, mm. like the, the shift to the extreme right in mm. government, the purges that are taking place uh, in the Trump administration, both in the national security and other branches of uh, government, the entry of the alt-right into those, which is increasing yeah. the danger of uh, fascism. And then CJ is going to do a piece on the socialist moment, a oh. piece on the socialist moment. So we're looking forward to both of those things. So in any event, we will uh, uh, be back. Uh, we're still optimistic that mm. we're going to win this bad boy in uh, November, that the anti-Trump pro-democratic forces are going to uh, uh, win, that there will, in fact, be a mass electoral movement. Um, and um, and it's going to be very successful. Mm. Unlike anything that country has ever seen yeah, before, I, agree. I think there's the potential it's still history. Uh, for that. Historic, history making, y'all. So in any event, thank you for watching. Uh, please share your views, comment, hold a watch party, and we'll talk to you next week. Thanks, Michael. Anytime. Bye-bye. Thank you.